I'd like to welcome everyone to the June 29, 2017 meeting of the Delaware County Board of Commissioners. If everyone would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we've got a busy meeting. Good morning, I'm Jeff Benton, President of the Board. To my left is Gary Mill, our Vice President. To my right is fellow Commissioner Barb Lewis and our County Administrator, Farzan Ahmed. And today, uh, uh, <laughs> what do I do to do with that? I don't know. Nova is our clerk today. So I called him Sarah Nova once, so you did better than Oh, okay. Me. I did, yes. I did yes. yeah. And I am There's just done. too many, too many DeNovas. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, Sarah, take it away. Resolution number 17-676 in the matter of approving the electronic record of proceedings from regular meeting held June 26, 2017. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 17-676. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Bitten? Aye. We have no public or elected comment today. Resolution number 17-677 in the matter of pur approving purchase orders, then and now certificates and payments of warrants in batch number CMA PR 0628. Memo transfers in batch numbers NTAs PR 02, sorry, 0628. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 17 677. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 17 678 in the matter of approving travel expense requests. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 17 678. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-679, in the matter of adopting and implementing the delivered work in the county's branding project. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Jane Hawes, Communications Manager. Uh, we have before you today a resolution to adopt, uh, approve and adopt the new uh, branding materials for the county. So I prepared a little presentation to unveil them. Um, so. Basically, going back over the timeline of what's occurred, um, it was almost a year ago today, uh, that we issued the RFP for the vendor uh, who would design, work with us to design the new branding materials. We received 25 proposals by the August 1st deadline. On September 26th, we awarded the contract to Studio Graphique out of Cleveland, who subsequently changed their name to um, Guide Studio. Uh, then on November 4th is when we kind of began um, the basics really of what we were doing a lot of the research we held a discovery workshop which brought together internal and external stakeholders and out of that we developed a lot of really interesting statistics about the, the county um, especially when you compare them to national averages uh, some of the thing and I know that for the designers themselves they I think they were kind of surprised they didn't realize the extent to which the county really the quality of life is what kind of kept coming through with the research. Uh, when you look at the home ownership figures down there with Delaware County compared to the nation, 82% to 63%. Median family income, nearly 92,000 to 565 uh, The poverty rate, tremendously low in the county. The education rate, very high in the county. Um, so these were I think this was very illuminating uh, for the designer and ourselves. Um, after that, we also reached out to the public using Facebook and Twitter to conduct a survey. And these results, they were very helpful in, in helping us not only educate ourselves, but the designer understand more about the county. We got 551 survey responses. A lot of people gave us feedback. Um, sort of the, the, the things that came through strongest, you saw here, things that mattered most to our residents, quality of life, small town culture, quality housing, public schools, convenient location. Um, these are sort of 
this is, you know, the word cloud, words that kept coming up <clears throat> when they surveyed them um, in terms of how they described the county. Uh, this was kind of an interesting question that we threw in, trying to get at how well do people understand what Delaware County government does. This uh, graph here shows most of them consider themselves to be somewhat familiar with what the county does, but when we went into some questions saying, which of these services do you think the county provides? You know, we found, I think it was something like 70% think we provide water service. We know we don't. So for us, this was kind of a really good tool, a motivation tool, basically, in terms of, okay, here's the work that we have to do in order to educate the public better about what does county government do. They also thought, many, the majority of people also thought that Delaware County government runs public education. Um, so we've got work to do in the future, and hopefully the new branding materials are going to be part of helping the public understand who we are and what we do and what services we provide. So going on from there, um, doing all this research, basically part of it is to develop a strategy. And these are kind of the words behind the images that would come out. And from there we created a positioning statement, which sums up Delaware County, and it was Delaware counties where prospering farmlands meet urban centers, offering exceptional services, safe neighborhoods, excellent public schools, and high-wage jobs to build an educated workforce and communities with shared values that sustain economic growth and create a high standard of living. So this is who we are now. From there, we finalized the strategy. This by the end of January, we were able to do this. And this gave us sort of our brand purpose. What do we believe about ourselves? And what do we believe our purpose is for existing? And there we have our belief is that we believe nurturing public health and safety, identifying economic opportunities, and supporting education. We can scale, meaning grow larger or smaller as needed, while maintaining a high quality of life countywide. And that our purpose we felt in distilling this down was to create the ideal place to work, live, and raise a family. Uh, so those were some of the most important factors. And I also have to I apologize, I didn't immediately identify our executive committee who were a part of all of this along with the designers. Myself, Cy Keeley, Don Houston, Scott Sanders, and Jenna Jackson all really did yeoman's work through these nine months of this project. So, um, and they were very instrumental in helping the designer especially understand this is who we are and this is what we need the images to represent. So from there, mid-February is when we got our first logo designs. And I'm going to share the first batch because they, we liked them, but as hard as we tried, we couldn't pick one. We just felt like each one just didn't really hit the mark. And these were the six concepts they gave us. Um, we probably came closest to trying to work with this one, but as hard as we tried, it didn't. There were some of us who really kind of loved the dots, but knew, no, that's just not going to work. Um, <laughs> it kind of had more about too high tech a feel. Um, you know, some of the others, these felt more appropriate to a city or a village. Um, so, we were, so we went back and forth for weeks, and then we finally went back to the drawing board. Literally, this was one of the sketch sh uh, sheets that we got probably mid-March from the designers where we just literally started going back and forth, like, what do we feel like we need? And a lot of it came down to feeling that the shape of the state and the shape of the county were very important in terms of representing and helping us understand, because one of the factors that came up um, in the research is the amount of confusion about there as to what state are we in, because there are so many other Delaware counties in the U.S. We felt it was going to be very important to have both Ohio featured prominently and then the county itself it seemed to emerge as a very important factor for showing people this is Delaware County. So finally, by the beginning of May, we had settled on a primary concept that we continued then to fine tune and keep working on. Uh, some of it even involved with the shape of the county in it, um, the angle at which it was in the design. 
Um, we started to inventory our current supplies. What are the things that we have to replace? Uh, what do we have to do now? How much is it going to cost? What can we hold to do until later on? I started to meet with other officials here in the county to see if they were interested in adopting the new materials and if we could customize it in some way for their particular office. Then in June, we installed the new type font on the county PCs. This is actually the new type font that we're using. It's something called Merryweather, um, and it's now on everybody's computers. We began ordering the new supplies, and we finalized the customized logos for the other officials until we get ourselves to today, where we have the new logo, and it is this. So as you can see... <laughs> The, we have the state outline, we have the county outline, we have a tricolor background, and basically the colors represent the green, our farmland, our parks, forests, all the green space. The research showed this is tremendously important to our residents. Here the water, the lakes, the rivers, the streams that run throughout the county, also very important to the quality of life. This is, a, we call it a sunburst. It represents sort of the optimism that we feel about the present and the future in the county. Although, as you'll see it in a little bit, one of our elected officials had a different interpretation that impacted how she decided to customize the logo for her office. This here, we have to give Commissioner Benton uh, props for this, harkens a horseshoe shape. We didn't want a literal horseshoe but we wanted something that suggested it because obviously equine history is a very important part of our history. So, And then down here, the scripted Ohio was actually an idea that came from our county administrator, Farzana Med. Um, and these were, these were all things that we had to play with, with the designers to get them. The county, thankfully, we are in the center of the state, so that lent itself well to the design. But on a map, we're actually sort of tilted a little bit down to the right. And when they initially did the design, they showed it that way. But everyone who would look at it would start tilting their head to the right <laughs> and feeling like they were losing balance. So we had to convince them we've got it tilt it back up a little bit. So that was it. Now this is the full color design. Now the color is a little bit off on the monitor, but the one on the left is green. Uh, this is going to be our single color version that we'll probably use most often on our stationary envelopes, things like that. Um, it's also more cost effective to reproduce than a full color version. The black and white was important to us to make sure that it looked good in black and white because a lot of times if people are making copies quickly, they're not going to default to a color version. So the black and white we had to also look good and we felt this did. This is a version that's going to appear as a cast plaque seven feet in diameter near the entrance of the new courthouse. And it's kind of, a, they call it a reverse image where the black and the white are reversed. These are what I call our casual Friday versions of the new logo. Um, you'll see the engineer's office is going to use a version of one of these uh, for one of their uh, logos. Um, but these can be used in a variety of ways. Right now, John Melvin and I are talking about the possibility of oops, this one um, on the sides of vehicles, if that's preferable to doing the circle. And we're going to be polling you to see which you prefer in that one. Um, now getting into the, the offices that decided to customize, the county auditor went with this one. A lot of offices decided to add a banner underneath with a motto. Board of Elections did the same, their motto, working together for our republic, they added. Now this is the one, clerk of courts, you'll notice we have the blue up here and the gold down here. That's because Natalie Fravel, our clerk of courts, saw cornfields in the yellow, and she felt that the blue represented Lake Erie and the watershed. Oh. So I asked the designers, I said, well, can you flip the colors and, and see how it works? And we did, and I think it's neat, because it, it gives her office its own unique version of the logo, and we, that was important in the project, was to respect the autonomy of each of the offices. 
Uh, the coroner's office is using this one. The county engineer actually detail-oriented as they are, or are going with several. Um, they have this one, which has a, the really neat transparency in the background of a surveyor's scope and the bo open book. And then they'll have these versions as well. This here with the engineer's office, Delaware County Engineer, and they'll have a version like this with and without the banner. Then probate juvenile is ready for every occasion with their three versions. <laughs> So uh, prosecutor's office went with a red, white, and blue scheme. That was Carol O'Brien's request. And they also sort of broke up the design to move the Ohio here and then put a banner there. Um, now Delaware County Recorder's office, they're going with our mark as well. And then this is what you'll see happening with a lot of other offices is using the type font as a title, they'll be able to add the the name of their office or department over there. So that's how that will be featured. And then Veteran Service Office, because they've used sort of this double circle version for a long time, we worked with them to create one with this design, and they also wanted the red, white, and blue. So um, there we have it. So I, I recommend that you adopt and approve this. Otherwise, I'm going to walk out into traffic. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I may not come back yet. <laughs> All right. Well, any questions? Gee, what a fabulous presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your work on this, Jane, and to, to the committee. Thank it's, you. it's really impressive. It's, it's, I, I love the way it can be customized to what the other elected officials would like, yeah. too. I, I think with the designers, they weren't expecting that. They had not worked with a county government, per se. Um, I have a feeling we're going to be a very interesting case study for them to take to conferences and future clients just because of the degree of customizing and understanding how a, government, a county government is structured and works. Yeah. So, thank you. No, I, I like the versatility. Now, uh -huh. before you start describing the colors, mm -hmm. I would have taken, much like uh, the clerk's office, the brown to me was agriculture, the, the green was business, money, oh. the blue was water. So I think it has, uh -huh. so it really has a lot of versatility. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's a workshop. Uh, uh, yeah. But it is uh, easy to use in the other, mm -hmm. sometimes you get so many things going different, different ways, it's kind of conflict. I think it flows well together. I think it, uh, Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I like it. Another thing about the the brown or the yellow being real, it's also at the top where our agricultural is. So mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. what stuck out with me. But yeah. I, I, I'm very impressed with the versatility of it, but yet maintain the integrity of it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a quick question. What about the other uh, countywide organizations, you know, like the health district, the fair? <laughs> Basically, when, when today's session ends, I'm going to be releasing this to them, encouraging them, if they would like to use this, include it in their, their own branding in some way. You know, a lot of times you will see an organization include a logo from a bigger organization that they're part of. So we'll be encouraging them uh, to do that, the health district, the library, preservation parks, um, a lot of those. I, I've got a, a lineup of about 100 emails that are going to be going out <laughs> So when we get done, including all our townships, too. Um, and, and the cities and municipalities, I can understand they may not necessarily want to, but I'm hoping the townships will find value in, in joining in with us. So. Right. Yeah. Um, what kind of timeline for the rollout then? For the rollout, I am hopeful by the end of this year. I don't want to, you know, break the bank by going straight into everything. We've allocated five thousand dollars so far. A lot of that's going towards the business cards, stationery, envelopes. Um, well, if you approve, you'll be getting some new. Um, business cards, you know, even the little key fobs that have the, the symbol on there, uh, name badges, lapel pins, things like that. Mm -hmm. Then I'm anticipating the vehicle decals to replace, because we have 153 vehicles, 
one for each side, 306 of them. Right now the costs are looking, you know, at about 2,500 for that. So I kind of want to stagger things along the way. Um, we're fortunate in that as an organization we haven't been so wholly reliant on this, on the logo that we have had, that we don't have a lot of places. That where we need to replace. It's not like, as I've been using the example, McDonald's. You know, if McDonald's replaced their arches, that, that's a big, huge cost. For us, I think it's going to be quite reasonable. So I anticipate no more than 15000 I hope. So. You know, one, one thing, and, and with what you just said, as far as the townships mm -hmm. and maybe some of the cities also using this logo, mm -hmm. uh, it's especially important for that to happen in Delaware County, where mm -hmm. we are just north of Columbus and yes. Franklin County. Yeah. And some mm -hmm. people don't realize that they're, in They're actually in Delaware County, yes. and I, I, I think yeah. the, it's something I really hadn't thought of, but the ability, therefore, to unify the county mm -hmm. to a greater degree through this branding. That project. would be great. I mean, wish list, also, you know, the welcome sign when you're coming in on some of the major thoroughfares uh, that yes. states you're in Delaware yes. County, mm -hmm. um, you know, rather than just the warning sign that, you know, the, that one on you see on 315 about now you're with the traffic camera photos or something you know, that you're yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, yeah. in Franklin County. Um, so something, yeah, that's, that's going to make it more identifiable and clearer. Yeah. A couple other comments. Uh, the, uh, first of all, I like what I see. Mm -hmm. But there are going to be a lot of people who are, have regrets about the old logo going away. Mm -hmm. Somehow we should find a way to memorialize that logo mm -hmm. in some sort of uh, uh, historical fashion that will be well, there. I, so. I think we're going to keep it on the side of this building. It's up, you know, along facing Court Street. And then there's another where, place where it's used coming in the doors off of Court Street. And John Melvin and I have talked about leaving it basically as an historical artifact, um, leaving them in place. Certainly the one that's up high. Um, I think everybody identifies that, you know, as being part of anyway, it. Anyway, just a suggestion yeah. for, for yeah. that, because there could be some other ways to re mm -hmm. do it, you know, some, anyway, just yeah. talking out loud. Yeah. And the other thing that we've talked about is, it kind of goes along with what Commissioner Lewis was talking about, inviting people into our county as they come and go at all the major thoroughfares on the north, south, east, and west. Mm -hmm. uh, as time, we should, this, this is the invitation to our county. This tells people they're in Delaware County. Uh, and I think that uh, that is an important part of mm -hmm. staking our claim that the value of our county and what it okay. contributes. So uh, yeah. that's a project I hope we address over well, the next We've got you on tape months. saying that, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. My compliments. Cool. Thank you. All right. Okay. I think you have to vote now. Yes, yes, yes. We don't want Jane walking out into traffic. Yeah, no, no. So, That's right. We will go ahead and vote yeah. okay. and, have, and Mike have an episode here. <laughs> oh, on motion 17-679, Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Bitten? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Thank Great. you. And now, Thank you. now I can give you your goodies. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Got them already. Yeah. Pretty confident we were going to approve it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we were pretty confident we were going to approve it. Thank you. Thank you. The, uh, oh, good. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. All right. We've got new fobs. Yes, and the version with the golf tee will be coming next. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. All right, well, great work. That's going to be a oh, logo we can live with for a long time. That's, that's very exciting. A lot of hard work, a lot of effort went into that. So it's very, very exciting. Um, we'll move on. Resolution number 17-680, in the matter of approving a mem memorandum of understanding for Local Area 7 Workforce Development System. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm David Dombrowski, which um, Job and Family Services. I had to think about that for a second. Um, <laughs> behind me and to my right is Steve Sequoia. I'm going to present the first item on the agenda, responsible, which AFS and Steve is going to do the last three. 
um, as in, he's in training to present these for us, so I'll be helping him out, but he'll present the next story. This particular mem or, uh, memorandum of understanding is between us and Area 7. Um, it is a subgrant agreement that allows WIOA funds to transfer from Area 7 to us, and it also sets out the parameters by which expenses can be billed back against the one stop center at JFS. So um, I'm looking for your approval on this. Any significant changes, David, in this one? This no, the, we had a, uh, 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 an issue with the state. Um, the state wanted to lower their contribution to Delaware County, um, and we fought that back. Um, and so that was a last-minute change. Uh, we altered the dollar amount by about $1,000, um, but it wasn't a significant change. So from last year, this is biennially we do this. Um, it is recurring, and there's no major substance changes from the prior years. Okay. All right, vote. So on motion 17-680, Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Britton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Resolution number 17-681, in the matter of approving a contract and addendum for the purchase of strategic plan development and implementation services between the Delaware County Board of Commissioners and Thomas P. Miller and Associates, LLC. So moved. Second. Discussion? Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Stephen Socorro with JFS, as David had uh, already introduced me. Um, we are seeking a contract to assist Job and Family Services to develop our strategic plan, um, and we had chosen Thomas P. Miller and Associates um, to, to help us develop that plan. Um, so they are, um, we will be getting stakeholder inputs um, from them if, if this is approved, and um, they will collect and analyze input um, and present it to all our stakeholders as well as our department. Okay. What, what do you think, uh, as far as far as what do you expect them to do? I guess. Yeah, that's a question I had. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so the the strategic plan, what they will do is is they'll do the standard SWOT analysis, which is to the, first of all they'll meet with um, the administration of JFS. Um, we will meet with our staff um, because we it's important to kind of set the tone. Um, with our staff, get the staff's input. They will be meeting or surveying you, goes on. Um, they'll survey our community partners, um, and they will look at all of our opportunities, kind of all of the threats to the agency, kind of put that together. We will be reframing our mission statement. We will be reframing our value statement um, and our vision statements to kind of look forward over the next five years. Um, and then we will develop based on whatever um, goals we're setting for over the five-year period. Um, we will then develop action steps, and so that will help us to streamline, become more efficient, um, drive the agency forward in a very focused and consistent way. Sure. So. Sounds good. Yeah, so the goal is um, they will start in July. My hope was that that would help us to inform our budget conversation for next year. Uh -huh. So I was hoping they have the strategic plan done um, September, October-ish. Um, and so um, we received from Furzan the, the kind of budget timeline. Okay. And so we'll have some initial stuff in August when we present our, our book, our chapters, um, okay. to you. So um, we'll still be able to use that to inform next year's budget um, so that we can streamline money spent with specific goals. Sure, sure. So. That's, that's great. Thank you. Will they look at uh, your organization structure for efficiencies and productivity and so generally they don't do that type of work um, we will look based on kind of the goals and kind of where we're headed um, we'll take a look internally to try and figure out are we streamlined in a way that will effectively meet those longer term goals um, the other thing that obviously there is always the unknown variable for us is federal funding state funding mm -hmm. budget shift priority shift um, so that makes this a little more challenging for us in terms of how to where to look for those streamlines and efficiencies, um, but we are constantly looking for streamlines and efficiencies in, in our agency currently. Mm -hmm. What what is uh, Thomas P. Miller's background? Are they are they in? Have they done strategic plans for jobs and family services in the state? So they have. One of the things we look for is significant history um, in similar or like projects. Um, they are a. Um, organization that's based up in the Northeast. Um, in fact, I think they're in the Summit County area. Um, so they have done government work um, up in that region of the state, but not so much in this region of the state. So one of the folks that they had worked for was um, drug and alcohol up in Cuyahoga County. was one right off the top of my head I can remember from their submission. So they do have similar work in government structures. I can't speak specifically to job and family services, though. Okay. 
Okay. Will they focus on best practice ideas? Is that what would be one of So the that's ideas? as we lay out um, kind of where we're headed and the action steps that we take, um, we always look at best practices. Um, and, and we engage kind of statewide in, in our um, Job and Family Services Association. So um, with us and them, we will look at best practices rolling forward. Okay. Good. All right. Here. Anything? No, I have not. Okay. All right. Vote. So a motion 17-681. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-682. In the matter of approving a first amendment to the contract for purchase of transport services between the Delaware County Board of Commissioners and Delaware County Transit Authority. So moved. Second. Discussion. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, we are seeking um, approval to uh, amend our contract um, with the Delaware County Transit Board, um, also known as DATA. Um, so what they do is they provide eligible um, customers of job and family services um, transportation for medical, non-medical medical emergency transportation, um, transportation to and from work sites. Um, so it's, this is a valuable resource in our community to make sure that our clients can get to their medical needs as well as their, um, sometimes they use it for, like I said, work, to make sure they're getting back for, for to work. So uh, we are looking to extend this contract um, in, into uh, 2018. Um, the original contract started um, in July of 2016 and ran to the present. and. Um, so far, 118 clients have utilized the uh, data for their transportation needs um, and totaling 2,516 rides. So people are using this transportation service. It's a, it's a good, it's a valuable resource to our clients. And the 2,516 rides, we've spent how much on that? Um, up into Is this point, approaching 100,000? Um, the contract was for 100,000 up to April, um, where we have our um, expenditures is five fifty seven thousand six hundred fifty seven dollars at this point. Okay. So um, there will be some obviously May and June um, bill will be coming in, so we'll be closer to that hundred thousand uh, price at that point. Um, but we are ex seeking to extend that contract to two hundred thousand dollars. I guess I, I have some reservations because it does seem to be pretty expensive for if you break it down on a per trip basis, it's somewhere in the thirty to forty dollars per trip if I'm doing the math correctly. Um, and that's, you know, some of those are short trips, some of those are longer trips, but that, you know, per leg of a trip, that that, that is kind of expensive. So, yeah, so, um, and, and I appreciate that comment because that's, that's a fair assessment of this contract. So um, back in 2016, we released an RFP for these services, mm -hmm. um, and we received at the time two responsive bids. Um, one was from Data, obviously, and then the other from um, ACME. Um, unfortunately, one of the um, capacity or, or issues we have in Delaware County is lack of transportation. And so um, there's limited options for us. Um, and so we went through a negotiation process and came to where we sit today. Um, and I do agree with you, there's more work to be done. Um, and, and one of our interests at the JFS is obviously how can we expand transportation community-wide. Um, unfortunately, coupled with this, we're having issues with the other provider um, to the point where we have suspended right now ridership with that contract. Um, so data has picked up non-traditional hours and done some things for us to help accommodate for that loss. Um, and Farzad and I have had conversations about how to work with the, the rates currently being charged, um, and that's something we're going to work on moving forward. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, data does a great job. They're a good organization, but they are expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's you know, just always looking for more more cost-effective ways to provide trans very important transportation needs. Yeah, we agree. Yeah. Okay. I sent an email this morning in response to your ACME comment, which I won't go into detail here, but uh, is in response to an email that we received. So uh, uh, the, the liability issue that came up, uh, uh, but there needs to be some sort of cost analysis. Maybe they uh, well, you know, just leave it at that, and I think the email speaks for itself. And so look forward to hearing a response on that topic. Yeah, sure. Okay. Take a vote. So on motion 17-682, Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 17-683, in the matter of amending the child placement services contract between the Delaware County Department of Job and Family Services, the Delaware County Board of Commissioners, and Mohegan Youth Academy. So moved. Second. Discussion. 
Thank you, Commissioners. Um, we are seeking permission um, to extend our contract with Mohican Youth Academy. Um, at this point, we have one youth there, and we had them on a short-term contract, so we are seeking permission to um, have him there until he is 18 years old and So, and to continue that contract. When would that be? Um, I believe April. it is April 4th. 4th. Yes. Okay. And next year? Next year. Yes, 2018. Thank you. Okay. All right, vote. So a motion, 17-683. Mr. Sorry, Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good Resolution. job. Sorry. Resolution number 17-684, in the matter of approving an addendum to the lease agreement between the Delaware County Commissioners and the Ohio Department of Public Safety Bureau of Motor Vehicles for the Frank B. Willis Building, Delaware Deputy Register Agency. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, John Melvin, Director of Facilities. Uh, this is to amend the lease for the fourth option to renew, for a two-year option to renew for the uh, BMV at the Willis Building. On these next two items, I have been in contact with the attorney for the Department of Public Safety about amending these leases uh, to incorporate a rate adjustment and, you know, future automatic rate adjustments. Uh, they are requested to go ahead and do these amendments and give us time to properly uh, negotiate that future amendment, which we'll work on right away. Okay. Um, I think if I do the math right, it's it's around eleven dollars a square foot. Yes, about eleven forty a square foot. Okay. Okay. Is that? Do you think that's market below market? I think it's below market. Um, when we uh, established this lease uh, in two thousand eight, uh, it was strictly based upon the uh, purchase price of the building, the construction for the remodeling, and some overhead for for maintenance. Mm -hmm. And it was okay. set up in a fashion that there was no automatic adjustment. You know. Or that time was just simply establishing the, uh, the lease as a partnership agreement. Commissioner, may I add something to that? Sure. Uh, one of the things that uh, Director Melvin and I have talked about is that when this one is up for uh, uh, an extension, uh, we will look at market rates. It's the only fair thing to do. Uh, and I agree. I said before, I'd rather not be in the landlord business. That's not a primary mission of county government. But we are for a number of reasons, and this building is unique. Um, so, therefore, we ought to be compensated as, as uh, fairly for that. Do they pay uh, common area maintenance, any common area charges, either of these tenants? Uh, as far as... Uh, or, what are you, I'm sorry. What are you referring to? Bathroom, hallway. Bathroom, yes, hallway. Yes, yeah, I mean, there's a common, yes. The, the common use area, there's percentage based in. Um, the factor is they occupy only about 5% of the building up there. Right, right. No. So it's, it's oh. minimal. But they do pay. Yes, that is factored sure. in there. They also pay all, they pay that percentage of the utility costs as well. Okay. And John, you know my opinion. We've had conversations. I'll just leave it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Um, okay. We'll vote. Vote on motion 17-684. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-685. In the matter of approving amendum, sorry, addendum to the lease agreement between the Delaware County Commissioners and the Ohio Department of Public Safety Agency, sorry, Public Safety Ohio State Highway Patrol for the Frank B. Willis Building Delaware Drive Exam Station. So moved. Sorry. Discussion. As noted, this is, this is for the driver of the Kazam station at the Willis Building. Same. Same comments. Same, same yep. issues. Same issues. Same issue. All right. Yep. We'll, we'll take a vote then. Vote on motion 17 685. Mrs. Got it. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Resolution number 17 686. In the matter of approving an extension to the memorandum of understanding between the Delaware County Department of Environmental Services and AFC. Sorry, AFSCME Local 2896, Ohio Council 8, AFLCIO. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Tiffany Mag with the Regional Sewer District. This is an MOU that we use for emergency and on call situations. Um, we actually had a verbal agreement to extend this MOU to June 30th, back when we did negotiations in December. Um, and in the meantime, we wanted to look at if there were other alternatives to maybe negotiate a new MOU and determined that it was best to keep the one that we had in place. So at this time, we're looking to extend the existing with no changes all the way until the end of 2019. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17-686. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. 
Resolution number 17-687. In the matter of approving the Sanitary Sewer Subdividers Agreement for Four Winds Drive. So moved. Second. Discussion. This is a subdivision uh, just north of 3637 east of I-71 near the Tanger Outlet Malls. Um, it's our standard subdividers agreement for 28 properties there. Vote. Vote on motion 17-687. Mr. Pitton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-688. In the matter of its accepting a limited warranty deed from North Star Residential Development, LLC. So moved. Second. Discussion. Uh, this resolution is for us to actually accept the property that the treatment plant sits on. It's a little over three acres. Um, we do already own the treatment plant itself. Uh, we just had to get a couple more hoops to jump through so that we could actually accept the property that it sits on as well. So at this time, we're looking to get that completed. Seems like an appropriate time to ask the question with the, the work that was done to bring it up to standards. Is it is everything going well? It is, yes. Everything's going well. Uh, no issues currently. Everything's running well. Um, the plant's meeting its limits, so it's good to go. Okay. And this was agreed to before, I assume, that the land would be transferred to us? Correct, yes. It just it was something with the exhibits and the descriptions legally that needed to kind of be worked through, okay. um, that it took a little longer. It should have been accepted, you know, at the same time, but here we are. Okay. All right. Vote. Vote on motion 17-688. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thanks. Thank you, Tiffany. Resolution number 17-689. In the matter of approving contract modification number one for the project known as 2016-2017 roadside mowing contract. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Chris Bosserman, County Engineer. As you know, we have a contract uh, mower who mows uh, the county uh, roadside rights away for us. We have actually two separate contracts, the county split in an east and a west zone. And uh, the uh, current contract for the west side had a provision that would allow us, it was bid last year, would allow us to extend that contract for another year. And uh, so this uh, action before you today extends that uh, as a recommendation to extend that contract through 2017. And then because those two contracts are staggered, uh, the they'll both expire then next year and our plan is to bring that all under one contract instead of having two separate contracts for two separate zones. We currently have two different providers or the same provider? Actually, it's the same contractor, but we certainly could have two different under the under present scenario. Now, has the performance been It's been good. good. Uh, there, are, there are always uh, uh, issues where you'd like to see a little bit more here and there, but the contractor has always been very responsive in addressing those, and so uh, if, if we had... Uh, uh, if I had concerns about that, I wouldn't be recommending the extension. Thank you for taking care of the issues I yeah. know that we brought to your attention. Yeah. You're welcome. Right, right away. These things do come up. Um, okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17 689. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Resolution number 17-690, in the matter of clearing an emergency for the uninterrupted and prompt provision of building inspections within Delaware County. So move. Second. Okay. Discussion. Good morning. Uh, Fred Fowler with Code Compliance. Uh, this original agreement for outsource inspection services was approved back, back in April in anticipation of needing a little extra help because of a, a retirement with one of our inspectors. Since then, we've had some unexpected shortages in staff and really need the uh, extension of this agreement so that we can maintain our inspection services and, and the turnaround time on inspections. Okay. I know you're working on a long-term solution to staffing. Correct. We will continue to uh, strive to get permanent staff members employed and uh, up to speed and, and uh, trained and we feel that's that's our best line of customer service so we will work with human resources and Frazan and getting that accomplished <coughs> i believe you're already working on that yeah. we are yeah right okay and have been yes all right vote so on motion 17-690 mrs lewis aye mr merrill aye mr Benton. aye thank you thanks for Resolution number 17-691, in the matter of appointing a member to the Delaware County Finance Authority Board of Directors. Oh, it's 
So moved. Sorry. I'll second. Discussion? Uh, I do have a statement I want to read. Um, and I've written it down just so I say it without getting off on the tangent. Uh, one of the most difficult things is to publicly disagree with my fellow commissioners. But the voters in this county expect us to follow our conscience, and Tom, sometimes we will disagree. The board nomination is particularly difficult for me. I genuinely believe Scott Coverley, who I consider a friend, cannot and should not be a candidate for the Finance Authority. In his professional capacity of commercial real estate sales, there will be conflicts of interest, which I believe will require him to recuse himself from occasional board duties. This will affect his ability to be an effective, contributing member of the Finance Authority Board. Secondly, in his professional role, it could, in my opinion, also prevent opportunities from being represented to the board because of developers, entrepreneurs being reluctant or concerned about maintaining appropriate confidentiality by board members. It should not be inferred that Scott Coverley would react in an unprofessional manner. Simply, the perception becomes a detriment to the Finance Authority mission. For these reasons, his likely need to recuse himself on occasion and the perception of conflict of interest by possible, by possible presenters, I cannot support Scott Coverley as a member of Finance Authority. This is not and should not be interpreted as a negative reflection on Mr. Coverley, nor is it a reflection on my fellow commissioners who I believe support Scott. This is simply good people with an honest disagreement. It is my hope that I am being overly cautious and that my concerns will prove to be unfounded. Well, um, I would like to speak in support of uh, Scott Coverley. He has uh, a long history in Delaware County, a business history with uh, Coverley Studios, and has been a leader in other, many other organizations and a part of even more organizations in Delaware County. And I, I truly believe his knowledge of the county is, is very valuable for the finance uh, authority. I also think that, that with his business dealings, um, he will, if, if anything comes up that would present a conflict, that he would recuse himself. I have, I have no doubt about that. I've asked him about that. And and I think his business dealings can be a plus because he does know real estate and development. And uh, the finance authority is involved in that. And so I, I think he'd make an excellent member for the board. Yeah, I guess I would uh, echo uh, Commissioner Lewis's comments as well. Um, boards of directors of county organizations oftentimes, in fact, probably most of the time, have members who potentially have conflicts of interest in activities that that uh, organization deals with. So, um, so, so again, I, I'm not as concerned, and again, I certainly respect Commissioner Merrill's position, and, and um, it, very occasionally we do disagree on, on positions, but um, it, it is not unusual for board members to have conflicts. In fact, it's, it's more normal for board members to have potential conflicts, uh, given that they generally get into boards where they have a background or an interest in particular and therefore uh, can very easily come up with uh, conflicts. Um, and I've known Scott Coverley for 40, 50 years, and he's a man of high integrity, a very smart guy. He loves Delaware, Delaware County. Uh, very dedicated to it, as he's evidenced in as many other organizations and that he's uh, been a director of or, or participated with. And, and uh, um, he's got a lot of history in Delaware County, and, and uh, I'm very confident that if, if conflicts do arise, he would recuse himself, and as, as would be appropriate. And secondly, um, I guess I agree with Commissioner Lewis's comments that having development expertise on the Finance Authority Board because none of the other six really are, have done development work um, uh, is, is a big plus in my mind. So uh, for those reasons, I, I will support uh, Scott as well. Now we have before you the uh, resolution of appointment for Scott Coverley for the unexpired term. This is one of two seats that were unexpired terms, vacancies that have existed. So, Okay. Okay. Uh. All right, we'll take a vote. Oh, on motion 17-691, Mr. Merrill? No. Mr. Britton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. 
Resolution number 17-692, in the matter of appointing a member to the Delaware County Finance Authority Board of Directors. So moved. Second. Discussion? Uh, this is another resolution of appointment for the Finance Authority Board of Directors. This is for John Benahoof. Uh, it is for the other unexpired term. This one ends December 31st of 2019. Okay. Look forward to having John on the board. We'll take a vote. I think he interviewed well, and I think he'll be a good addition. Yeah. Yeah. So on motion 17-692, Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jane. That brings us to administrative reports. Thank you. Um, what, one of the things that uh, that I've focused on uh, since you hired me, Commissioners, is to try and bring a little bit more cohesion uh, between the various departments that report to the Board of Commissioners. As Jane was talking about during her presentation, county government is different in which a lot of uh, offices act independently. So keeping that in view, I've actually asked Don to participate in the uh, uh, strategic plan that Director Dombrowski was talking about. And a lot of people don't know this about Don, but she was once a social worker, so she actually has that GFS background as well. So I think, and, and the purpose of that is as they talk about their mission with the agency, well, that mission needs to align with the mission of the Board of Commissioners. And, and I think she would do a great job in, in, uh, in meshing those two together. Um, this evening, I'll be representing Commissioner Merrill at uh, Regional Planning. Um, got a call from uh, Representative Brenner yesterday. Um, there is a provision in the budget that the House has sent before the governor that makes the counties whole. We'll see what happens. All I can do at this point is report out on that. And, and of course, I know, I know that you, all, all of you feel the same way. Um, our representatives have really been vigilant. Yes, yes. Not only have they been vigilant, but they've been very um, informative, letting us know. And, 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 and I think we are lucky to have uh, Rick Garfani and Andy Brenner representing yes. us in the House. They're both very good people. Um, I want to thank Jean and the members of the committee, Don, Sai, Jenna, and Scott Tokoff. They did a lot of work, and Jane shepherded the process, and uh, I think you did a great job as a project manager. Yes. We have Don, myself, and Sai have talked about this, that you are the uh, public information officer here, but, but you have done a fine job as a project manager. In my career, I have uh, supervised lots of project managers, and so I can tell a good PM from a bad PM, you're a heck of a PM, so congratulations on doing your job. Uh, Last thing is just an editorial, again, along the lines of, uh, of our branding. Last week I was at a funeral and I ran into uh, a friend who happens to be a commissioner in another county and out of respect for his uh, privacy, I won't name him, he made a comment to me. He said, hey, Farzan, good to see you. You guys, you guys are an up-and-coming county. And I said, uh, no, sir, I disagree with you. We are not an up-and-coming county. <laughs> we were an up-and-coming county 20 years ago. We are one of the most significant counties in the state of Ohio. And he says, yes, you are right. I stand for oh. <laughs> So I think that the rebranding efforts and the things that everybody is doing around here and, um, and different areas and, and participation of various people in the county in, in, um, in leadership roles outside of county uh, is going to go a long way towards changing the image that some people still have because that is not the correct image. So that's all you have. Thank you. Good to hear. Commissioner Lewis? All right. I went to the Bridges Community Action Partnership Board meeting last night, and uh, uh, REA uh, Ray accountants, CPAs, oh. were there presenting uh, a summary of the audit, of, of their audit of uh, the partnership. And uh, it was an excellent audit. Um, and I think this will mean something to you, Commissioner, since you're a CPA. Uh, the audit was unmodified, clean audit report. I mean, but I guess unmodified is a special. So clean is what you're looking for. Okay, clean and yeah. clean, is, clean means unmodified. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. So that That's was good. That yeah, was good. that was really good, right? And um, oh, you know, when we were discussing. Uh, various items, uh, our executive director made the point that of the people who are served by um, community action, 58% of the clients uh, work. 
And I think that's, that's important to point out, too, because there are many people working, again, the working poor. And they, I mean, they just need help on certain things to maintain their employment, and, and that is so important. Uh, the other thing, we talked about the Veterans Court uh, recently, and I just wanted to add that um, the Veterans Court, uh, Judge Hemeter, has set up a planning committee, and this will be a committee of all of uh, all the county groups who can provide services beyond our veterans services, uh, official veterans services uh, group, but others who can, who, who can help uh, veterans in any way. And she is also looking for veteran volunteers to mentor those veterans who have found themselves in the criminal uh, justice system. So I want to make sure everybody knows about that. Uh, they are looking, though, the person needs to be who volunteers does need to be a vet because that's the best way to that uh, they'll be able to uh, relate to other veterans. So uh, that's that's an important point. We'll have to keep making that that point. So so that that is underway right now, as you mentioned. That's it. Okay. Very good. Commissioner Merrill. I have a couple of things. Um, first of all, I believe uh, Ms. Houston has a birthday tomorrow. Yesterday. It was yesterday. Was it yesterday? Well, I missed it. I apologize. I, I was a day late. I thought it would be a day early. <laughs> so my apology. So I want to ask you how many years. Are we going to sing? Um, I think she wants us to sing. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Morpsey uh, has their tour of uh, Ross County uh, next Thursday. I will be at this meeting, but I probably have to leave about 10.30 in order to make the luncheon at 12, the executive committee meeting, so just to FYI. Okay. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm guessing I get there an hour and a half from the Yeah. Fine. Chilla Coffee. Yes, Chilla Coffee is where the luncheon and the executive committee will, will be that day. Prasad um, mentioned it, I think it's worth re-mentioning. Uh, Mr. Cravani and Mr. Brenner have done exceptional work uh, in support of this MCO. Uh, very good follow-up. Mr. Brenner, late as last night, he gave me a count on where it stood, and uh, they've, uh, they've really gone the extra mile. And I know we all have gone the extra mile, as George Kite said, I'm sure other elected officials who I may not be aware of have participated in making it known the counties, the impact it has on not only our county, but the other 87 counties as well. So uh, a shout out to Mr. Brenner, a shout out to Mr. Carvana yes. in support of this. And uh, hopefully our governor will sign it. And uh, if not, hopefully it can survive a veto. So uh, uh, I think there's reason for optimism on hopefully both counts. And if not both, certainly the latter. So. Uh, and that's, that's all I have, but uh, we are being well represented on this yes. topic by our representatives. Yes. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, I'd like to echo that as well. And that you know, the the threat of a governor's veto is real, and I think the likelihood of an override is also real, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is certainly encouraging because this is very important to us and just extremely important to so many counties. Um, so I applaud the, right. uh, the legislature for figuring out a way to to make it uh, happen. Um, the, oh, the one thing, too, uh, County Commissioners Association of Ohio has done a great job lobbying on this. They've been, yes. They, yeah. they have them. mobilized us, and then, of course, they're the lobbyists. Yeah, I'm, I'm privileged to serve on the, the board and involved in that, and they have, the lobbyists have done exceptional work uh, encouraging us to go down for <laughs> committee yeah. meetings and stuff. Yeah. I mean, they've really, we've been well represented by the counties, by CCO, mm -hmm. by, the, by the employees, the lobbyists that we employ. So, uh, uh, and I think if nothing else, this shows where 88 counties really work together. At least 86 of the eight signed uh, resolutions or pr produced resolutions for this project. And that's exceptional when you yes. get 86 yes. of, out of 88 doing anything. Yes. yes. Um, and uh, and everybody was in it together. Nobody tried to protect their own interests. Right. Everybody was in it to protect the mm -hmm. counties all throughout the state's right. interest. So good point. Excellent. Yep. Um, just a couple other things. We had our investment committee meeting earlier this morning. Uh, investments in the county continue to perform very well under Treasurer Peterson's leadership. Um, portfolio is yielding. 
at a higher and higher rate on a regular basis, and we're managing that money very well and providing a nice stream of income to the county. Um, the Farm Bureau breakfast is Friday morning. I'm not going to be able to be there this year. I was there last year, and that was interesting. A lot going on in that organization. Um, let's see. Uh, Our administrator, Frazan. Is, is going. Is going. I'm, I'm also yes. representing. Also representing. Great, great. Yeah, they're just a good group. They do a lot of good stuff. I'll get good uh, food too. Oh, good <laughs> food. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. In town on good food. <laughs> yes. Um, I'd like to wish everyone a happy Fourth of July. Obviously, we're not going to be in session on Monday, but there's parades and uh, the Central House Symphony concert is behind Gray Chapel and in Ohio Wesleyan's campus on uh, Monday or Tuesday at 7.30, I think it is. I would encourage everyone to go. Uh, bring your earplugs because when they, when they shoot off the cannons for Tchaikovsky's oh. symphony, it can get a little loud. Uh, but they do a great job. And then the fireworks there afterwards. Uh, it's just a, a fun uh, fun evening. And uh, lastly, I'd like to thank Commissioner Merrill for wearing a purple tie along with me in honor of Golf Awareness Week. Um, <laughs> I wish it was Golf Awareness Week. It is. It is. So I want to thank Commissioner Merrill. And maybe next year at this time, everyone will wear a purple tie. Yeah, you know, we're oh Golf God, Awareness is. Week. Oh, for yeah. There's too. some purple in there. For yes. Yes. Come on, it's with us. Yes. Who else has a Let's red? Let's see. Any know. purple in yours? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe John. Next year. We'll remind you next year. Um, okay, I guess that's it. We do have need for executive session. Yes. Resolution number 17-693 in the matter of adjourning into an executive session for consideration of employment dismissal of an employee, sorry, public employee or public official. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 17-693. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. We're in executive session. Okay, I didn't get my coffee. I didn't have a chance. <laughs>